Thank you very much. Um, I confess when I first walked uh, into this building and into this room, I thought I had made a big mistake. Uh, looking around at this space, seeing the performance at the beginning, I thought maybe I was at an Anushka fashion show, or, or maybe there was an announcement of a new Apple iPhone being introduced in Hungary, or, or a new television show uh, being launched. But when I thought about it, I realized that this is the correct setting uh, to talk about the value uh, of employees with disabilities, uh, because that is very much a 21st century business issue. I speak to you as a longtime reporter and editor for the Wall Street Journal and Bloomberg News, a business reporter who's covered business for more than 30 years. I've overseen and driven coverage in, in thousands of stories in Europe, the United States, and in Asia. And our reporters have written about some of the biggest companies, whether it's Microsoft, Toyota, the airline companies, uh, manufacturers, uh, big multi-billion dollar companies, but also small businesses and entrepreneurs. I've written myself about people with disabilities, um, whether it's a young computer science student at Harvard University or a young woman with cerebral palsy in Beijing. And what they all tell me, and I'm sure what you've heard often, is that all they really want is an opportunity to show what they can do to work as an equal they want the same opportunities as everybody else. And so that got me thinking, what are the barriers that are in our heads? We understand the barriers that are in the heads of people with disabilities, the, the barriers they face, but what is it that stops us from working with people with disabilities, hiring them, working for them as our bosses? And the biggest barriers, I would suggest, are in our heads. They're not the stairs, they're not the size of the computer screen, they're the way we think about people with disabilities and the way we treat them. And the media obviously plays a tremendously important role in shaping those views. I think one of the things that's changed in the media in the United States is that we've become much more conscious of how we talk about people with disabilities. Where once we were careless in our choices of the words we use, we're much more careful now. But even more important, the biggest change I see in the past five years uh, in the United States, in Europe, and, and even in places like China, is that the idea of employing people with disabilities no longer is something you do from the heart. It's no longer an idea of charity or doing something um, that makes you feel good. It's really driven by the head. Uh, it's really driven by a recognition that employing with people with disabilities is an economic decision and it's a profit-making decision. It's smart business thinking. This is being driven by the fact that increasingly to remain competitive, any company, any country uh, has to draw on all of its talented people. I was talking to an American CEO in New York a few months ago, and I asked him, what's your day like? And he said, every day for me is a war for talent. I need to find the best people to work for me because I know my competitors are doing the same thing. So, Employing people with disabilities, widening the talent pool, is no longer the right thing to do. Uh, it's also the profitable thing to do. Um, this has become most visible in the United States, for example, with people with autism, people on the autism spectrum, where many tech companies have discovered that people with autism are extremely gifted at doing coding, um, at working at customer service, um, and uh, developing products for them um, and writing software. And they are willing to make accommodations for them, to allow them to work at home, to have work accommodations uh, in offices, because their value is dramatically uh, greater uh, if they're able to harness them. Even in China, there is now concern of trying to mainstream and employ workers with disabilities because China, too, is facing a labor shortage. As the society ages, they need to have every worker possible coming to the factory and working. I think companies are also realizing, and many of you may be realizing it as well, that there is a market out there for many of the products that we use to accommodate people with disabilities. Having a standing desk at work, for example, which my uh, secretary has where I work now, is not only good for someone like her who has a visual disability, but it's good for someone like me that I don't have to bend over and, and hurt my back. Uh, cutouts for wheelchairs, ramps, are used not only by people with disabilities, they're used by people 
uh, who might have come home from the hospital or might be pushing their parents or grandparents along. The other factor that I think is very important is something that's happening internationally, which is the growth of corporate responsibility. Again, this is not charity. This is a key business value that I think especially young people, young consumers, young customers, the customers of the future, are very concerned about. They will go on the web, they will look and see, are companies doing the right thing for climate change? Are they doing the right thing for how they treat their workers? Are they doing the right thing for how they treat people with disabilities? And you don't want to be uh, a company that gets attacked on Yelp or that gets trolled on the internet for not doing a good job for your workers. At the same time these changes are happening in businesses, there's a tremendous change in the media, which I'm sure all of you are very aware of. For people like me, traditional journalists, this is very difficult and disruptive. But again, I think for businesses, for advocacy groups, for governments, it creates a huge opportunity to tell your story better, to get out there and tell the stories of people you work with, of companies that are successful, to put out the positive message, not only to the broader society, but also especially to people with disabilities that you want to employ them, and that employing them has an economic benefit. I would urge you to tell those stories on social media, because believe me, when they appear on social media, the mainstream media picks them up. We report a lot of bad news, that's true, but we also report a lot of good news. Not fake news, but good news. And it's important that we become aware and educate ourselves of many of the advances and exciting and innovative things um, that, you are, that you are doing. Looking ahead over the next 15 years, I do believe that from a business point of view, from what I hear talking to CEOs in America, in Europe, and China, that employing people with disabilities is going to be one of the most important trends and is going to accelerate in Europe and globally. And so I think here in Hungary, joining that trend and accelerating it in your own business will show a number of important things. It'll show that you are global that you are joining the, the, the drive for business to be innovative, to be entrepreneurial, to adopt change in the best practices of companies like Amazon or Google or H&M or Nike or Starbucks. It'll show that you're progressive and a responsible corporate citizen, which is something your customers, especially your, your young customers, I think will increasingly demand. And finally, it will be courageous. I think many of you here who have started businesses or run businesses are successful because you took a risk. You took a chance. You decided to take out that business loan. You decided to open that store. You decided to expand into that new market and launch a project. So I would urge you to be innovative and entrepreneurial as well in how you approach uh, including people uh, who have disabilities. Don't be the person who throws away a resume because the person has autism. Don't be the person who cancels an interview because the person shows up for the interview uh, in a wheelchair. Be the person who's forward thinking, who's innovative, who's entrepreneurial, and who takes a risk and shows courage to move ahead with their business to include people with disabilities in it. And by doing that, I think you'll not only make a profit and enhance your reputation, but you'll also make this a better society as well.